So we're here in a hacker room right here at uh, Linara Connect Hong Kong 2018 and uh, you're booting some Android over here. This is Android AOSP yeah. TV. <laughs> right. This is, as you can see now, AOSP TV. So it has an interface that is pr pretty much the same as you've probably seen in an With a lean back Android UI? TV box. Yeah, yeah, like a lean back UI. And, and one of the things uh, we've done here is put it on a new, uh, newer version. So this is actually based off the Android 8.1 code, while the I think all the available TV boxes are still on 7, and maybe some have moved on to 8.0, but there's definitely none on 8.1 yet. So this is running on the Poplar. Is yes. It, is it the Poplar um, High Silicon based? Right. This is the old version of the High Silicon Poplar. There's a new version uh, that is already floating around here and should be available uh, soonish. But what's, what's new with the new one? Not that many differences. I think it's mostly bug fixes in the hardware. So what do we see in your code here? What, what's going on? Oh, what's that? That is uh, just the uh, messages coming fr uh, from the Poplar board over the serial port, uh, showing a couple of errors that still happen, but that aren't fatal. So, so what can you do? So what What would you be doing right now if I didn't interrupt you? Essentially, just m uh, monitor those, see if there's anything that really need to be fixed. Uh, and Before the demo day tomorrow, right? Exactly. <laughs> so this is what you've been working on this week? Uh, uh, you're doing lots of one part TV? of it, yeah. And the other stuff is uh, mm. mobile related? Or? Yeah. The other thing we're going to show tomorrow is um, mobile phones that have been updated to newer kernel versions. So probably you've seen a lot of phones and then looked at the settings and they all say kernel. 413 or so, which is uh, two and a half years old, or worse, and we are trying to fix that and to show uh, vendors that they can safely move to newer kernels, at least within like the same release line. Which phones, for example? We've done a lot of work getting the Sony Xperia XZ1 to, uh, to work with newer kernels. Snapdragon 835, yeah? Uh, I think it's an 820, but certainly yeah. a Snapdragon of some yeah. sort. And then the, mm. there's uh, an, another uh, mm. the pixel or? Yes. Yeah. The other one that may or may not make the demo tomorrow is a Pixel 2 XL, the, um, which currently doesn't boot, but it's probably not that far away from it. Uh, uh, during the show, I was showing you this one. What do you think about the, this, that, this kind of phone? That's a super interesting device. It uh, has a nice keyboard. so. Much nicer to type on uh, than any on-screen things, and it dual boots between Android and regular Linux, so you can even do some development on it. But it's running it's on a MediaTek X27, right, with a Mali GPU. I heard. Did you hear the story about this uh, this uh, open source Mali driver that's appearing? Yes, that would be really nice if only it were, uh, were at a point where it's usable. Did you hear about this? It's called a Pan Frost, right? Mm -hmm. Pan Frost, uh, free open source driver for Mali T8 series, T6 series, T7. So, uh, what do you think? Is us do you think it might be usable or not? Or I know for a fact that it is not currently usable because uh, that is one of the biggest problems we currently see in the uh, ARM on Linux world. Hmm. But if it can usable, that'd be cool, right? Yeah, of course. That would essentially fix all our graphics problems at the same time. It would make a lot more boards immediately usable without having to wait for them to uh, build drivers, and yeah, including this one. So we, uh, we could instantly run all the interesting distributions on it uh, because it wouldn't need a rebuilt binary driver. And uh, so, so you were b very busy with AOSP TV, and uh, you also have the Macchiato bin right here. This is your yeah. development board and the Quad A72. This trying to is essentially a board that I'm using to replace my desktop. It has pretty much everything you'd need in a, a standard uh, development setup. It has SATA ports, so we can connect a real hard disk. The, it has a DDR4 slot, so, uh, so we can connect enough memory. 
like 16 PCI GB. PCIe slot uh, so we can connect the graphics card, but unfortunately that slot isn't working right now. So that's uh, one thing only. that needs. It's only yours hmm. that has an issue, right? Because last, yeah. uh, uh, last in our connect you had it working. <laughs> right. I think there's uh, several different versions of that board and some have the problem, some don't. So that's something that we'll need to work around. <laughs> So on this one, um, there, I've, I've seen a Sailfish OS that's using the LibHybris uh, uh, library to accelerate. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say, uh, let's say you, you really like the Open Mandriva, right? So what would it right. take to get that on here? Probably not that much. I mean, essentially, it's an ARC64 processor. We have a port for that. The, uh, we could just co uh, copy the OS image over, and then yeah. The problem would be getting all the hardware components to work. Uh, the graphics driver is certainly a problem because it's Mali. And then maybe we'd need a special driver for the touch screen. I'm not sure if that uses any special protocol. But everything else should just work out of the box. Probably a lot of applications aren't really made to uh, work with a small screen like this. But if you can work around that... What, what do you think about uh, this, this lib hybris? Uh, do you think it's complicated, maybe, to put it into, let's say, uh, Open Mandriva to speed it up, or? So essentially, what that does is to, uh, translate uh, regular Linux calls to Android calls, uh, so you can use binary drivers that were originally written for Android. I don't really like that idea because it's just another source of errors, and you should really have proper drivers. And if the drivers were just as open as they should be. People could compile them for whatever OS they uh, want to use. That is really the right thing to do. But LibHypers is a fairly decent workaround for a problem for now, that yeah. currently doesn't have a good solution. But if this, uh, if this uh, Panfrost or, uh, driver, uh, this, this open source Mali G GPU, how long, how, long, how long do you think it might take for it to, to be good? That can take forever if it even yeah. succeeds at all. There have been a couple of attempts before, like the Lima driver and then a revival of the Lima driver. And both projects essentially gave up at some point. Shouldn't ARM provide support for these kind of projects? They totally should. Well, then they should just open source the driver, right? That would be the same or...? That would be even better because I mean, those guys know uh, what's in their GPUs, so the, uh, they wouldn't have to do all of the reverse engineering. <laughs> and another thing that is taking, you know, the, the lib hybris is taking like the 4G LTE, uh, like uh, 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 phone calls, some other things, right, that are kind of like Android's things that mm. might ju not just work. If you just copy and paste your, your uh, open Mandriva, maybe it's going to miss some things that Android has, not Probably, only the yes. GPU, right? So that would be a challenge too. I mean, that would be... Right. I mean, for, first of all, the goal... Uh, when I get hold of one of those devices. Because you want to have one of those. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I've already pre-ordered one. Yeah. So the first goal will be to uh, use the Android side to do phone uh, thing stuff and b boot into Open Mandriva. Uh, and there are buttons that will allow you to do a boot. So the, uh, in the first step, we'll just turn off the phone functionality when you're booted into Open Mandriva and boot into Android for that. How, but how of course, in the second step, all the functionality should be available in both worlds. How about uh, uh, running the other Linuxes in a container in Android? That would be another interesting approach that is really what should be happening because uh, you want to access your same emails regardless of uh, what operating system you're currently booted into. And you want to access your same uh, contact data and uh, everything. And probably you want, if it's one device, you don't want to go through the cloud in order to just uh, keep your own data in sync with your own device. So the thing that is missing there is essentially mostly the, the switching between the totally different um, graphics systems. Android uses Surface Flinger and Linux uh, depending on which distribution you're on, will use either X11 or Valent, and they don't really coexist all that well at the moment. Could you like just run one of them in the, in the container somehow? That should be doable to uh, 
just kills a uh, surface flinger when you're switching into the uh, Linux and just k uh, kill x11 or valent and restart surface flinger when you're switching to Android while keeping the rest of the system essentially running, but that's not yet a perfect solution, so that's really something that needs to be worked out. Or maybe you would have to like take over the whole screen so you, you don't you don't get all the Android notifications and stuff if you do stuff in the open Mandriva, but if you get back it's, it's there again, right? Yes. So you'd have to take over the whole screen. But you would somehow run it on top of the Android without rebooting or and, yes, and there's probably ways you could uh, work around that uh, there's a tool called KDE Connect uh, wow. that uh, you can put on an Android phone and you can put on a Linux desktop. And that uh, essentially makes the phone to, uh, talk to the desktop and send the notifications there so you see them. And of course, in this context, that could just be used on the local host. So it would just send the notifications over the network to itself and then the, the desktop on the other side would uh, display them. So uh, uh, right here we're in the uh, mobile group and home group room, hacking room. This is the last day of basically a few hours before the demo day, right? So, so uh, there, there are usually there are a few more people, but would you like to introduce around some of the guys that are around here? Yeah, sure. Right. This is Andre. Uh, Hi. Hi. He's from TI and has been at an, a lot of uh, Linux Connects. Do you want to explain what you're doing? <laughs> Uh, at the moment, I'm mostly busy with the uh, open automated builds, uh, setting up those builds for uh, LHG uh, group, uh, adding uh, the features they're working on. Uh, otherwise, these builds are trying to follow uh, reference platform builds. All right, so uh, open embedded stuff. Yeah. That's like kind of like for the embedded market, right? Or it uh, runs on any kind of hardware or? Uh, this is kind of build system. Build system solution. Uh, yes, uh, it's for embedded market, but mostly yes. Uh, this is um, a way to uh, build uh, your own distribution. Uh, if, right. if if uh, say it in a few words. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. And uh, how about over there? Hey. Yeah, we have Peter, he's the tech lead hey. of the home group. <laughs> hey. Hey, hiya. Um, yeah, working on the Poplar 2 board. Um, so this is uh, the same, the new revision of what uh, Barrow was just showing you. Uh, trying to get Opti and uh, Widevine and PlayReady uh, DRM schemes working on the board. So all done to work on the AOSP TV kind Sorry? of a Weren't solution? Yeah, and integrated with uh, yeah. Opti, mm -hmm. which okay. is the... Uh, tr T that Lenari develop. But you want to change uh, because uh, the, all the Android TV boxes out there that are kind of like commercial are not using up T yet, or, or what what security are they using? The Quite a lot of vendors have their own yeah. Ts. Okay. Um, well, we're obviously trying to, to encourage people to use uh, uh, open source uh, open source T security. So we provide yeah, reference like solutions to the yeah. to our members, um, yeah. and you know, no, just no, trying no, to bring it up for the demo tomorrow. And uh, uh, so, f just for example, what are you doing there? Are you communicating with it, or? Uh, I'm just putting a server uh, uh, image from my build okay. server at home. Okay, you just want me to from your to server at home to flash on the board. Yeah. All right. Is it going to work tomorrow? I hope so. <laughs> All right. So, who else is uh, in, on your team? Uh, so this I is think you know. Uh, ah, oh, sorry. Do you want to you go go first? No, you yeah. carry on. <laughs> Uh, this is Alex from NXP. Um, he's working on the IMX 8M SOC. So hey, what are you doing over there? Well, currently I'm doing uh, standard uh, development, but because my uh, our demo is already ready for tomorrow, you got everything working. Well, everything that we wanted to show, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, but you are still hacking the. Is it this one over there? Uh, yeah, IMX 8. IMX8, yeah. is it 8M? Yeah, 8M. Yeah. M doesn't stand for multimedia, no? It just stands for medium or something. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those that have uh, recently become available on a whole bunch of boards. They're actually on the market now. So it could be for the TV box, set the box market, potentially. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So I think it's a, it's a quad core A53, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. 
So right there, and you are doing some some fixing or some 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 stuff. Um, yeah, <laughs> going forward for the next step. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah, this is Jankin. You've probably met him. Yeah. He, uh, he works with me on the mobile group. How long time you work together? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> like five years, six years. Ah, oh, probably. <laughs> and so, so what do you do? And what do you do? What's, what's, uh, how do you work together? Yeah, Bro is my tech leader. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he helps me a lot on my Android, uh, uh, Android, Android development. Uh, so so how, what does that mean, tech leader? Does, does that mean you kind of like, uh, as, like suggesting things to do and he just does them or? Essentially it means <laughs> whenever he sees me, he has to raise his right arm and shout, Heil Barrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All right. So do you enjoy working together? No, we're not that yeah. kind of company. <laughs> no, of course not. Of course, even though your accent is funny, but it's not the, that kind of accent. <laughs> so just the... Uh, what's it called? How, how, do you f how do you feel like working with Burrow? How is that? Uh, yes, I'm happy to work with <laughs> Burrow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he know many, thing, many uh, things about Android, especially about the 2G, and, uh, and uh, C, uh, C or C Plus and Bionic project. Yeah. yeah. So, for, for example, what kind of uh, challenges, huge things has he solved in the last five years, you can mention? Oh, a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, he is essentially the, uh, maintaining all of our builds and uh, running all the tests, uh, looking where, uh, where problems occur, f uh, fixing lots of bugs. Just recently we've had one really big bug where, uh, that we spent weeks debugging and he finally found a solution for it that was... Um, the settings app was constantly crashing uh, inside ICU, and it turned out that it was caused b uh, by a uh, bug in, what was it, the in power management yeah. app? Yeah, in yeah. power. <laughs> in what? In parameter? Uh, in power. In power. Mo module. Yeah. Module. Yeah. How do you find oh. this? How do you find this bug? How do you find the solution? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, you, uh, I had some hack lines. Uh, some hack sauce in the code and make it uh, uh, stop, uh, stop before the crash happened, uh, and I then use JDP to debug from there to debug the uh, address memory address to monitor that, and it uh, JDP point me that the crash is caused by the poor power module. So do you have to be very creative in this business to be able to do this kind of stuff that you're doing? Like, you have to imagine kind of where the bugs are and find them and stuff? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly uh, the debugging tools should uh, take away the need for that sort of creativity, but uh, they don't always do. That's the problem when you have a modern system that is highly parallelized, there's just so many components that are running at the same time that uh, if there's any serious problem like memory corruption or so that c can interfere with each other. <laughs> so only this week, right, twice a, twice a year, you meet for the Lenara Connect and the rest of the time you're like in Switzerland, right? Switzerland yeah. on the mountain. And where are you? Uh, where do you live? Uh, uh, your home in the uh, country? Uh, I mean, China. In China. Yeah. Uh, in where? In China, I, uh, the city, I'm, I'm living, uh, living in Tangshan city now. Tangshan, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so do you, you meet on the chat, right? And you, you say, hey, yeah. how about we fix it? And you just fix it. <laughs> Is that how it works? Essentially, yes. We have uh, two uh, weekly meetings on IRC, and sometimes a video chat meeting on Hangouts or Blue Jeans. Cool. So it's going to be challenging future. There's many things that needs to happen in the mobile group, in the home group, right? Certainly. Mm. One of the next big things will be Android P coming out and uh, us needing to build AOSP versions of that and making sure they are useful. And See? other things are, uh, of course, continuing optimization work and getting all those features in, getting the DVB support into AOSP TV. Nice. So, lots of things to do. <laughs> uh, how about these guys over there? Should we introduce? You want to say hello? Oh, no. Hey. 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 So, who are you? 
Yeah, I am Siva Subramanian. Uh, I am working as a LG assignee from for Comcast. Comcast, Comcast yeah. Yes. So you uh, you working on some uh, uh, home home group stuff right now? Yes. Um, uh, we are working on uh, bringing up um, uh, the secure playback on WP browser on the high key platform. All right. Does it work? Yeah, we were able to get uh, clear key content uh, playback working, but uh, we are trying to uh, get play ready DRM also. Means uh, that work is still going on. Cool. To build All right. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah we, have a, we have a high key platform here uh, containing uh, uh, RDK Media uh, uh, stack. So over that uh, we have a uh, WP browser. So in that uh, we just uh, enable the Linaro CDM uh, capable to uh, do clear key and uh, play ready. Uh, uh, encrypted the media playback oh, so uh, clear mm. keys we uh, it, it's progressed well so we're ready for the demo and play ready uh siva subramaniam is uh, going with oh what is this this <laughs> phone call <laughs> yeah, that was cool <laughs> all right so uh yeah so w are you gonna work all night to make it work or is it working now so it's gonna work for tomorrow essentially it's working for tomorrow and for uh, I'll still try to get that uh, Pixel 2 XL to do something useful with the new kernel. But the problem there seems to be on the hardware side, not necessarily in the phone. There's some problems flashing uh, images uh, on that phone. And I've read a lot of complaints saying that, uh, it really depends on what cable you're using. So it might just be <laughs> some sort of interference on the cable. All right. And... Uh, uh, I think Android is shipping a uh, couple billion phones per year. So how many, how much code do you think is from you in all these Android phones? Mm, not all that much, but certainly a couple of lines. <laughs> because all, all the stuff Linaro does gets taken in by Google, right? It's open. Yeah, most of it. And we try to upstream everything we can. Most of it gets taken, so, uh, some of it uh, just uh, remains sitting in the garage repository for a long time. And some stuff gets rejected because uh, they don't agree on how something should be done, but then we usually get around to revising it to a more acceptable way. And uh, uh, why did you join and work on the, home, on the, on the mobile group? Oh, with the Android stuff. That was actually an interesting story. So that was, I don't remember exactly seven how long ago, ago, seven years or so. Okay. Android was still really new, and uh, my previous employer had just gone out of business, so I was looking for interesting things. For, found a message from Linaro that they are looking for a kernel developer, and I applied for that job, and essentially got a... Uh, we've already hired someone else for this job, but uh, your CV looks uh, interesting, and we have an opening in a group that's looking at that new coming thing, Android, have you ever heard of that? And I said, uh, I know what it is, and I know it's some Linux-based mobile OS, I haven't really had a look at it, uh, but would be interested in taking a look, and then I got hired to do that. And you're still doing that? Yeah, <laughs> you like the it you like the Android out. you you like the Android guy at the, one of the Android guys at Linaro. Uh, yes, and um, how about Android Things? That is another really interesting thing that, uh, that I'd like to look into, but that so far we didn't come around to looking into. The members haven't expressed any real interest, and we don't get to do things our members aren't interested in. So that's just something I can do on the side as a hobby. But there's so many things I'm doing there uh, with Open and Riva and other things Linaro doesn't care about already that it will take a while before I get around to looking into Android things or Android Wear or some other interesting tools. I think it is getting interesting with the, uh, Cortex A75 coming out. Uh, yeah. Not just that they have meltdown, but I'm joking, but <laughs> there's a, A75 is a huge performance and the uh, the, the second generation of the 10 nanometer, like uh, Qualcomm says it's 40% more powerful. No, that would be really interesting, efficient. especially for building desktop boxes and servers that can really compete with x86 boxes. So at the Nuremberg uh, Embedded World, did you find uh, some components that you needed? Yes, certainly. 
I'm pretty sure if, uh, I found an interesting SOC to, uh, to put into a laptop, which is based on the IMX8. The interesting thing there is that it has an uh, open GPU driver, uh, even before the MADI driver uh, gets reverse engineered. And it can take enough memory, it has an SADA port, for, uh, so we can put in a proper SSD and or hard disk. So uh, so then you have the, the choice of the, the, the PCB, and hmm. uh, how about the... Wait. Uh, it's, it's stuck behind here. <laughs> yeah, so you have the, the PCB and the um, software is okay? Yes, software side is uh, long soft. To build the ARM laptop? Yes. The problem is just that nobody is building the hardware and that's just being addressed now. And uh, so then once you have the PCB, you want to have a laptop case, right? Right. So once that is there, the keyboard, the mouse, and the, the screen? No, that will all be part of the laptop case. I mean, essentially, we want it to behave just like an x86 laptop with uh, something different in the inside. So and like of the course, the longer battery life you'll get from that. So like there's the ARM developer box uh, with the Social Next, there should be, uh, or, and you working on the micro to be also, uh, there should be an ARM developer laptop, which is what you're doing, right? Yes, exactly. Cool. And with a PCIe or no? It has a PCIe, but, uh, but um, it's always a bit of a matter of fi uh, finding something that uh, will still fit into a laptop case without making it too big. So you obviously don't want to put a regular uh, size PCIe card into that. But uh, we might end up making a mini PCIe slot available or so. For example, if people want to put in a 4G modem or so. And uh, how, how, f how long do you think it might take before something like that is available? Essentially, the, um, the board has the problem that the IMX8 chip isn't released yet. So we'll have a prototype pretty soon, but uh, until it's r uh, ready to go to the general production, public, yeah. it will so take a few more months. So uh, you're not using the 8M, the, the one that's released right now. You're taking the higher performance line, right? Right. MX8. The 8M is a really good chip if you're building a phone, but uh, if you put it into a computer or a laptop. Or a TV box yeah. also is good, the, the M. Maybe. Yes, for a TV yeah. box it's also good enough. But then the, the you're taking the other one with 72s and the whole, right. the whole stuff going on. And the, it has a bigger GPU and an open source driver for it. Exactly.